Hi everyone and welcome to this time-lapsed version of my German Shepherd in Soft Pastel. If you prefer longer length tutorials, check out my other playlists here on YouTube. I've got lots of other examples like that. And also check out my Patreon channel where you'll find my full catalogue of full length real time tutorials and lots more. But if you like this here on YouTube, you can help me out by simply hitting the subscribe button and following my channel. I'm working on velour pastel paper for this, my trusty favourite paper. It's not what I've been working on mostly recently, I've been using pastel mat a lot. But anytime I see a really lovely bokeh or blurred background like this, it instantly makes me want to reach for the velour paper. So I start off with the background and it's a dream of a photo reference to work from. I've just popped it up on the video for a few moments at the beginning of this. And it's always nice when you get a really good quality photograph to work from. My client asked if I could add some butterflies into the composition. A special addition for a very special dog who liked to lie in the garden and would let butterflies land on him and not even flinch. So a gentle giant. And I'm always happy to add things into portraits where they can be used uh, compositionally to add some interest to the painting. So it was already a beautiful photo reference before I added anything. And I hope that the addition of the butterflies only added some interest. But I'll be making some longer length tutorials from this footage. So this is just a quick overview to let you see the entire build up of the piece. I always think it's fun to see the full build up and it always makes me wish I could actually work this fast. But I will be producing longer length tutorials from this piece. In particular the background as that's something that I get to do quite a lot of the time where you've got greenery in the background and quite often you've got out of focus grass which becomes in focus where it's around the main subject, usually a dog in my case. But it works with my wildlife pieces as well. I can reuse this idea and it's always useful to know how to create a green coloured background. It sets a lot of the lovely warm toned dogs off really well. And a great example of that is of course the German Shepherd who has beautiful warm tones dotted through the dark coat. And it's certainly a type of coat that takes a long time to build up. Although it's longer than uh, a lot of brindle coats, it's a similar idea because you've got a mixture of colours ranging from really dark to really light in some places. So you have to get them all to shine out with contrast between the hairs and that takes a little bit of work. It certainly takes a lot of work on the velour paper to try and get the definition in the fur. Where velour really excels is in the blur and where you want something to appear out of focus. But as I've proved many times, you can get detail on velour. It just takes a little bit of work and a little bit of patience. But once you do get the definition in the fur on velour, I find that you don't lose the softness. That beautiful soft texture of the paper remains and the effect is really good, especially when you're painting an animal. Something that I find on pastel mat, which I've done many animals on now, is that I'm always struggling to get the softness. I always have to try and create the softness with my blending. Um, so it's, it's working almost the other way around. I'm, I'm trying to get rid of definition on pastel mat and make it look more natural, more soft. Sometimes I find that my outcome on the pastel mat ends up looking a little more flat, a little less 3D than on the velour. But I also really love the effect that I get on pastel mat. And for certain portraits, it really is the right paper. So I, I now 
sort of switch between those two papers as my main two. Still some other papers that I would like to try out though. But for my commissions, I'm usually on something that I'm a little bit more familiar with. So as always, an important part to portrait the eyes. And at a three quarter angle, it's usually quite a tricky one to get, but I always quite like it because one of the eyes is usually quite quick to do. It's mostly hidden behind the bridge of the nose. And of course, every area around the eyes, within the eyebrows, everything there is important to the effect. And you can see that I skipped a little bit of the footage there. Some of the hazards of recording yourself whilst painting. Sometimes files get corrupted. Uh, about a million different reasons why things can go wrong when you're recording. So I always feel lucky when I get the footage that I do get, knowing what can go wrong on a bad day. So working on down around the bottom part of the face. Using very muted highlight colours. The side of the face being mostly in shadow. We can see where the light is really heading the dog on the other side of his face. Over on the far eyebrow. Probably the brightest area on the dog. So keeping all that in mind, I try to keep all of my highlight colours a little bit more subtle. Using a lot of cooler colours within the fur. And if you're wondering what I mean by cooler colours, I have a video coming out next week on my YouTube channel, all about warm and cool colours, as that's something that you have to analyse quite a lot when you're painting fur. So if you enjoy watching this, I do hope that you'll stick around, that you'll hit the subscribe button, hit the bell button too to get notified when that video comes out. And if you're just starting in pastel, check out some of my paint along demos here on YouTube. Great shorter projects than this, which will help you get started and give you something that you can complete within a couple of hours. Because a lot of my work is commissioned work and I'm really putting in the hours. I'm putting in a lot of time to these pieces. And I film the entire thing so that the guys on Patreon can watch the majority of the painting come together. And I'll choose some important sections that I can make some really detailed tutorials from. And go into further depth explaining what I'm doing, showing exactly which colours I'm using. And once I have the face done in a portrait, it's often easy to think that you're almost there with the portrait. But if you're painting a dog like this, you know from previous experience that you're nowhere near there. You've got just as much work to do on the front of the dog. This chest area is just as complicated as anything on the face. So I need to put the same amount of time in here. Just studying the direction of the fur, the tonal values that I'm seeing, 
trying to judge which colors to use, not go too bright with my highlights. Again, just under the chin, you can see the brightest part of the dog, just on the jowls of the dog there, where it's been hit by the light coming from the right. And again, just a little bit of highlight down the right side of the dog where it's been hit by the light. So always trying to capture the direction of the fur, but also the direction of the light. So the all-important grass at the bottom, and I think this project was destined to have some technical failures, as for some unknown reason my camera went out of focus for a little bit of this. But I am going to make a full-length tutorial showing the entire background and also the real-time footage of this last part of the foreground grass, which shows the entire process that I used right along the front of the piece. How to get the dog to look like it's really sunken down, lying amongst the grass. And how to create the light as it's hitting the grass. Also, without going into too much detail, worrying about every single blade of grass, just trying to create the overall effect. And that's what I'll hopefully talk about lots more within my longer tutorials. So just adding the final bits of highlight to the grass. Again, really not worrying about each individual blade of grass. Trying to make a few blades nice and defined up over the, the front of the dog. But also trying to keep it loose and let some of that blur creep in again at the bottom. And just a final bit of work with the whiskers using some darker pastel pencil. These ones are easier to produce on top of the background color. The tricky part is when it comes to creating some of the lighter colored whiskers. So using a little bit of white, but also a little bit of a very light pale gray in the Faber-Castell range. And it's really about aiming where I wanted to go and leaning a little bit heavier than I normally do with the pastel pencils. It's not easy to get the lighter colors to show up on top of dark. And sometimes I will come in with the darker pencil just to help define around the edges of the whisker. I don't want to do that too much. I don't want them to look outlined. But if I can help them just define them a little bit more then especially with this one where the whiskers are on the shadow side of the face I can lighten them with the pastel pencils just enough so I hope that you've enjoyed seeing this speedy version I'll be back very soon to release my next paint along demo, this time in a wildlife theme. But thank you for watching the progress of Gorgeous Bear the German Shepherd. And I hope that you'll call back soon. Until next time, happy pastling.